So right here, I'm gonna explain the homework, and the homework we're only gonna do, as it says in red right here, only do square root problems or cube root problems. We're not gonna do the fourth root, fifth root, seventh root. So we're not gonna do number three because it has a fourth root right there. So let's not do three, let's not do four. Let's only do the square root problems and the cube root problems, okay? So let's just start out with number one, 80 x squared. When you do the square root of 80 x squared, now keep in mind this is a square root. So we're gonna split the root. You're gonna rewrite it as the square root of 80 times the square root of x squared. Now, 80 is not a perfect square number, right? Let's look at the perfect square numbers. I actually wrote them down right here in blue. Perfect square numbers, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49. And we want to rewrite 80 because 80, 81 is a perfect square number. If this said 81, the answer would be 9, but it says 80, not 81. So we want to rewrite it with multiplication to get 80. And you want to use the highest perfect square number possible. So 25 times 3 is 75, that won't work. Uh, 16 times 5, that actually gives you 80. And that's the correct combo, all right? So on your calculator, I would do 80 divided by 4. Yeah, that works, 4 times 20. 80 divided by 9, it doesn't work. 80 divided by 16, you'll get 5. That way you know that 16 times 5 is 80. So you're going to rewrite it as 16 times 5. And we are going to split the square root. So the square root of 16, that's just 4. And the square root of 5, that's going to stay the square root of 5. And when we look over here, the square root of x squared, remember, guys, that they, the square root is really the power of 1 half. So the power of 1 half is kind of like dividing by 2, the exponent, right? Where you take the exponent and divide it by 2. So what is the square root of x squared? What is the square root of x squared? x. Now, you already know the square root and the square, they undo themselves, so it's just x. No more square root. So I'm actually going to put that x right here between the 4 and the square root of 5. So the final answer there is 4x square root of 5. You get it? I hope you guys uh, understand this. Let's try number 2. Right here we have the third root. And ladies and gentlemen, I did write uh, perfect cube numbers up here. 1, 8, 27, 64, 125, 216, 343. If you don't know where I got those numbers, all I did was simply on a calculator went 3 times 3 times 3. I mean, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 3 to the third is 27. Uh, 4 cubed, 5 cubed, 6 cubed, 7 cubed, and it goes on forever. So just like square roots, we are able to split radicals. So I'm going to split that cube root the cube root of 108 and the cube root of b to the fourth. Now, 108 is not a perfect cube number. So I need to break it down with multiplication to get a perfect cube number. So I have 8, 27, 64. Now, 64 times 2 is 128. That's already too big for 108. So it's going to be one of these numbers, either 8 or 27. So with the calculator, what would 108 divided by 64, I mean by 27 be? So 108 divided by 27 is 4. So I know that 108 can be rewritten as 27 times 4. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rewrite it as 27 times 4. So 27 times 4. And then I'm going to split the third root. Why did I do that? Because the third root of a perfect cube number, that's a nice, beautiful answer. What's the answer there? 3. And the cube root of 4, you can't really do it, so you're just going to leave the cube root of 4. Now, we still have this to deal with over here, the cube root of b to the fourth. Now, when it comes to a variable and a power, you want that power to be divisible by 3. Remember, the cube root is really the one-third power, so you want this to be divisible by 3, and it's not. 4 divided by 3 doesn't work. So let's rewrite b to the fourth as a certain value that is divisible by 3. So I'm going to take the cube root of b to the fourth, and I'm going to rewrite that as the cube root of b to the third times b to the 1. Does that make sense? And now I'm going to split that cube root. The cube root of b to the third, that's just b. 
and the cube root of B, you can't do it, so you have to leave it. So once again, I just said the cube root, cube root of B to the third, that's just B, and this guy's just going to stay. So I need to put both of my answers, the blue answer and the red answer together, organized. So the answer will be the 3 right there and the B together. And then I'm going to take the cube root of 4 and the cube root of B and put them together underneath one single cube root for B. And ladies and gentlemen, that is our final answer for number 2. Number 5, don't do it. That's the seventh root. We're not doing that yet. We will be able to do that tomorrow, but not yet. Uh, number six. Uh, cross out the ones that have the fourth root or the seventh root. See, number eight has the fourth root. The rest of these, this is a third root that we could do that. Square root, square root. We could do all of these. We could do all those. Uh, number 15, that one has the fourth root right there. So let's just not do that one. Fourth root, let's not do that one on number 19. Um, the rest we can do. So, let's just continue on here. Number six, the square root of 100. Let's split the root, guys. The square root of 100 and the square root of x. What could you do? Which one could you do? What is the square root of 100? 10. How about the square root of x? You just bring it down. That's it. Easy. Let's take a look at the next one. Number seven, the third root. Okay, so let's split it up first. So here we go. The third root of 24, and then the third root of n to the fourth. Now, we need perfect cubed numbers right? What is a perfect cube number? 8 is a perfect cube number. Why? Because 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. 2 to the third power is 8. The next perfect cube number is what? 27. Because 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. Now, obviously you're not going to use 27 because 24 is not even as big as 27. So the only one you could possibly break it down with is 8. 24 is not a perfect cube number. Could you rewrite it with multiplication to get a perfect cube number? Yes. yes. 24 becomes what? 8 times 3. And now we're able to split the third root to each of those. And ladies and gentlemen, what is the third root of 8? That's just 2. And how about the third root of 3? You can't do it. You're just going to bring it down. Because when I say the third root, I'm really asking you what number times itself gives you this number three. And there is no such number, right? I mean, no real, no uh, rational number, that is. Um, two times two times two is eight. One times one times one is one, not three. So you can just leave it like that. Now, we still need to deal with this guy over here. Now, remember, the third root, and let me show my work here for those of us that are confused. When I do the third root, I could rewrite that the n to the fourth, I could rewrite the third root as the power of one third. Now, notice that that would be multiplying and you'd have to divide four divided by three. Now that's ugly because four is not divisible by three. So instead of dealing with fractions, what I'm gonna do, instead of dealing with fractions, I'm gonna rewrite n to the fourth as n to the third times n. So I'm gonna rewrite this thing, check it out. I'm going to rewrite it as n to the third times n. Once again, I want something divisible by 3. So I rewrote it as 3 and 1 right here. Because n to the third times n to the 1, that gets you n to the fourth. So do you understand how we rewrote this? And now we're going to split the third root. So we will have the third root of n to the third and the third root of n. Which one of those two could I actually do? The third root of n to the third. What is that answer? N. It's just n, huh? Just n. Now, what about this other guy? I can't really do it, so I'm just going to leave it. The third root of n. Now, my answer is right here in red. This guy and this guy. I just need to organize it. I'm going to put the nice numbers first. So what am I going to write as my final answer? Two. Two. What else n. is nice? n. 
And now inside the radical, I'm just going to put this one and this one together. So inside the third root, I want to put a 3n right in there. Now, I do need to show that it's a third root. If I don't put this little 3 right there, I want to think that it says square root because it does say square root if you don't put the 3. And it should be a third root. So there's your final answer, 2n cube root of 3n. You cannot just kind of get it. You got it. You got to get it. So we're on number nine. You need to get it. Come on. Get some. Get some. We're going to split the root. And this is a square root. So we're going to go the square root of 75, the square root of x. Dang, this one's ridiculously easy. What's the only thing you could do right there? 75 is not a perfect square number. So 25 times 3. 25 times 3. And right here, you split the square root, not third root, it's just a square root. The square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 3, you can't do it, so you're just going to leave it. But you could put it together with the square root of x, because the square root of x, you can't do it either. So let's at least put them together. 5 square root of 3x, final answer. 10 is also a square root problem. It's too easy. Split the square root to the 50 and also to the p squared. Now 50, you're gonna rewrite it as a perfect square number, not five times 10, 25 times two. That way when you split it, now you actually have a perfect square number here. What is the square root of 25? Five. five. And how about the square root of two? <coughs> Stays the same. Now what is the square root of p squared? Remember, square root is really like dividing the exponent by two. That's just p. So I can just take the answer p and put it right there, 5p squared of 2. So it's just organizing it. This was 5, this came down, and this p, I put it right next to the 5. Anything that doesn't have a radical, you want it out here in the front. So on number 11, it's a square root. 12 is a square root. I'm just going to jump to perfect cube or uh, the cube root questions, like number 13. Now. I know I could split up that cube root, and that's what I'm going to do. So I know that I'm multiplying in here, so I could split the cube root to each of the terms. Now, at this point, I want to do these three separate problems. The cube root of negative 192. Now, that's not a perfect cube number. What I am going to do is make a perfect cube number list. So when I start thinking, what is 2 times 2 times 2? That's 8. What is 3 times 3 times 3? That's 27. What's 4 times 4? 16 times 4, that's 64. What's 5 times 5 times 5? That's 125. And it goes on forever. But with these, it's already good enough because if I want to get 192, it's not even going to be 125 times 2. 164, I'm not sure. It might be 164 uh, times something to give me 192. What do you guys say? Calculator? Calculator, anybody? What's 192 divided by 64? three yeah. okay so I can rewrite this negative 192 I could rewrite it as 64 times 3 but it's a negative 192 so you would have to say negative 64 times 3 that'll give you negative 192 so when we split the third root to each of those terms uh, this first part that's actually going to be negative 4. And then you have the cube root of 3. And then you're going to bring down the cube root of A. And of course, the cube root of B to the third, that's just B. All we need to do now is rearrange it. Let's put the negative 4 and the B together. So negative 4B is part of the answer. And then we have the cube root of 3 and A together underneath one single cube root, so 3A. That is your final answer for number 13. Number 14 is a square root. I'm going to skip it. Number 15, we skipped that one. 16, I mean, you're supposed to do 16, the square root. You guys should be able to, might as well. Why not? This is so easy. Check it out. The 6 in the front is simply a 6. And then you split the square root. The square root of 36 is 6. 
the square root of a squared, remember that's dividing by 2, that's simply an a, and the square root of b to the fourth, that's really saying b to the fourth to the one half. So you're really multiplying 4 times half, which is half of 4. So you have b to the second. And let's not forget about that 6 that's out in the front. So you're going to have 6 times 6, a, b to the second. Final answer is 36, a, b to the second. Let's move on to the perfect cube, or the, the cube root ones, like number 18. That has an 8 out in front. That'll be an 8 out in front. And then we're going to split the third root of 1,000. And we're going to split that third root on the x to the seventh, the third root on the y to the second. Now, if you're thinking about perfect cube numbers, like 8 or like uh, 27 or 64, you will eventually get to 10 to the third power, which is 1,000. Okay, 10 to the third power is 1,000. So this is actually a nice, beautiful answer. The third root of 1,000 is actually 10. So you really have 8 times 10, which is going to be 80 on your answer. Now, this guy right here, you want something that's divisible by 3. 7 is not divisible by 3. So let's rewrite this as x to the 6 times x. Good job, Stevan. So that's going to be x to the 6 times x. That way, when you split the third root, uh, you could actually do the third root of x to the 6th, because that's like dividing by 3, dividing the exponent by 3. So you will get x to the 3rd. And then the third root of x, you're just going to leave it like that, third root of x. And the third root of y squared, you're just going to bring that down, the third root of y squared. And of course, uh, 8 times 10 is 80. And all we could do now is put both of these radicals together underneath the same radical. So the final answer for this one is 80 x to the third, third root of xy squared. Number 20. We have a negative 8 out in front. Let's split up the roots. So since I know that u squared can't be uh, divisible by 3, the 2 is not divisible by 3, I know they're going to stay in there anyway. So 256, uh, what numbers that are perfect cube numbers could be used to rewrite 256 to get a perfect cube number? So if you don't know, try it with the calculator. 64, maybe. What is 256 divided by 64? So 256 divided by 64 is 4, so you could rewrite it as 64 times 4. And of course, we're going to split the third root, split the third root. So you really have the negative 8 out in front times 4, because the cube root of 64 is 4. And then we're going to bring down the cube root of 4. And of course, we still have this that can't be simplified. Let's bring that down as well the cube root of u squared uh, v squared. Now the only other thing to do is to multiply the numbers negative 8 times 4. We're going to get a final answer of, let me do it in red, negative 32. And then inside the cube root, we're going to put this radical and these together. So it's going to be 4u squared v squared. Might as well do this one, 21. That's a perfect square or square root. So we have the 6 out in the front times square root of 80, x to the fifth, y to the second. And these are square roots, so you want perfect square numbers, or you also want exponents that are divisible by 2, because it's a square root, not a third root. So the square root of 80, you could break it down to 4 times 20, but there's a better option, 16 times 5. That way when you split the square root, you could actually do 4, and the square root of 5, you can't do it, you just leave it like that. Don't forget about the 6 times that's out in the front, so put 6 times 4 times the square root of 5. And then the x to the 5th, obviously you want an even power right there, so it could be divisible by 2 because the square root is really the power of 1 half. So what are you going to change x to the 5th to? 
Thank you. X to the fourth times X. Now, we're going to split that square root, and you will have the nice, beautiful X squared, because 4 divided by 2 is 2. And the square root of X is simply going to be the square root of X. How about this last one? What's, that's just Y. Because the square root of a variable to an even power, you end up just dividing that power by 2, and you end up with just the Y. So we're going to rearrange our final answer, write it in black. 6 times 4 is 24. And then I'm going to put the x squared and then the y. And at the very end, I'm going to put the square root of 5 times the square root of x together underneath one square root. Let me do it in black. So together, 5x. So there's your final answer. 24 x squared y square root of 5x. So remember, this is a cube root. So there is the nice, beautiful number, negative 9 on the outside. That's what I'm going to rewrite. I'm going to have to multiply later. Right now, I'm going to split the root to each and every one of these. So let me do the cube root of 243, cube root of x to the ninth, and cube root of y to the fourth. Now, after that, I need to simplify each of them. So right here, 243, that's not a perfect cube number. We could create a perfect cube number list. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. 4 times 4 times 4 is 16. No, 64. Sorry about that. But we already know that 27 times 9 is 243. So let's rewrite it as 27 times 9. Split the third root. And you will end up with negative 9 in the front times 3. And then you have the cube root of 9. And right here on this next one, this is nice that this power is divisible by 3 because the third root is really the power of 1 third. So what is the third root of x to the ninth? x to the 3, no more radical. And now this last one, it would be nice if this 4 were a number divisible by 3. So what I want to do is I want to rewrite y to the fourth. I want to rewrite it as y to the third times y to the 1. And then I want to split the third root. So the third root of y to the third, that's really just y. And the third root of y is going to come down as the third root of y. So there's my answer, all in red and blue. I need to rewrite my answer, but organized. So let me actually multiply uh, negative 9 times 3. That's going to be a negative 27. And then let me put the x to the third y next. And for my final uh, part of my answer, I need to put the third root of 9 and the third root of y together as the third root of 9y. So let me do the third root of 9y. And that is my final answer there. The negative 2, that being multiplied out in the front, is still going to be there being multiplied out in the front. Then the cube root, we're going to split it to each of the terms, the 256, the x, and the y to the 6. Now, 256 is not a perfect cube number. You want to rewrite it with multiplication to get a perfect cube number. So let me do a perfect cube number list right here in blue. So 256, you can rewrite it as 64 times 4. If you don't know, use the calculator. 64 times 4, and you're going to split the third root to each of those. You could actually do the third root of 64, that is 4. Let's not forget of the, time, the times negative 2 that's out in the front. Bring down the third root of 4, and then bring down this guy. There's nothing to do there, so let's just rewrite it, the third root of x. But this one you could actually do because it's the power of 6, and we know that the third root is a power of 1 third, which means that 6 is divisible by 3. So what's your answer there? y to the second because 6 divided by 3 is 2 so we're just going to rewrite our answer our answer is negative 2 times 4 that is negative 8 and let's bring the outside the, or the uh, y to the second after it and now we finally have the third root of 4 and x put together the third root of 4x and that's it Let's move on to the final answer, the final question.
can't think anymore. So we're going to take that negative 3, just bring it down. We're going to multiply at the very end. I'm going to split the third root to each of the terms. So there it is, the third root split to each of the terms. Which one's the easiest to do, guys? Um, the third root of x to the 6. What is that? X to the second. That's just x to the second. So on our answer, we're going to have x to the second outside of the radical. Um, what else? Let's work on, on this one right here, the third root of 62. Now, remember, perfect cube numbers, you have 8, you have 27, you have 4 times 4 times 4, 64. Uh, we have uh, 125, 5 times 5 times 5. So what are we going to rewrite 162 as? Could you divide 162 by 8 or by 27 or by 64? So if you do... 162 divided by 27, it works, and we get 6, right? Yes. So we're going to rewrite it as 27 times 6 instead of 162. But I am going to split the third root on both of those. That way I could do the third root of 27, which is just 3. Let's not forget about this multiplication of negative 3 out in the front. So negative 3 times 3, that's negative 9. Let's not forget about the third root of 6. Let me put that over here, the third root of 6. You can't do that. And we already did the third root of x to the 6. That gave us x squared. Now over here, this guy, you can't do it, so you're going to just bring it down, and it'll be the third root of y squared. So our answer's right here. We have 9, negative 9, x squared times this and this, but let's put those together underneath one radical value. So our final answer is negative 9x, third root of 6y squared. Man, that was a long video. Explaining every single question, or actually we skipped a couple. Explaining most of the questions on this assignment.